nowadays, many cigar manufacturers have opted to take an approach to blending cigars in a collaborative manner in the same form that, well, musicians get together to create supergroups or craft breweries join forces to release a special limited edition holiday ale or something along those lines. But every now and then, a special collaborative cigar rolls out from a couple of different cigar manufacturers that's head and shoulders above the rest. And not just in its ingredients and production, but who's producing the damn thing to begin with, with today's cigar being one of those sticks. Check it out. Allegiance by E.P. Carrillo is a prime example of one of these collaborative cigar supergroup smokes. This is the Confidant Vitola, which basically is a box press Toro. So six inches long, 52 ring gauge, Sumatran Ecuadorian wrapper, which is heavily fermented and quite oily, as well as a Nicaraguan binder and filler combos. While the cigar itself has E.P. Carrillo's name on the front of it, old Ernesto Perez Carrillo Jr. decided to tap the guys down at Oliva Cigars to produce this stick for him. He basically had a blend in mind. They had the ingredients and, well, production factory in Nicaragua. And he said, you know what? Why don't you guys just roll this on up for me and let's see how it goes. And boy, does it go. Now, to illustrate the magnitude of this collaborative endeavor and put it kind of into context, this is kind of the equivalent of Francis Ford Coppola approaching Martin Scorsese and saying, hey, buddy, I got an idea for a movie. I've already got the screenplay written. I even got the script taken care of. But what I need from you is I need you to direct it and produce it, as well as find me the right actors to fill in and make it happen. We can only imagine what this production would turn into and the awards that it would win. But that's kind of like what this cigar entails. Oliva Cigars and E.P. Carrillo joining forces to produce a smoke that is, well, the brainchild of E.P. Carrillo himself and the ingredients from Oliva and their awesome production facilities. I mean, that's just a guaranteed winner. And... Whew, what a winner this cigar is. Structurally, the cigar is just a gem. I've smoked a few of these and every single one has burned wonderfully. Uh, the only real issues I've had are, you know, a little bit of a, you know, flaky cap in places occasionally. It's a little misaligned and, you know, some modeling here and there. But all in all, wonderfully constructed cigars because, well, Oliva, go figure. As for the particular stick in my hand at this moment, it has a little bit of a soft spot right where the secondary band is on it, right near the center of the barrel. Um, but outside of that, not much to complain about besides a little bit of modeling and, you know, a notable seam down here near the foot band, which I do love a foot band on a cigar. Nice little touch. It's for a very good presentation and, you know, can protect a cigar if it's properly placed during a drop. The barrel of the cigar slash wrapper is kind of this interesting black tea with a little hint of lemon tartness that falls behind a whole bunch of leathery spice notes. That's true because it's, you know, Sumatran wrapper. The foot's very exotic smelling too. Uh, there's a ton of sweet, sticky raisin uh, aromatics to this cigar along with the typical, you know, earthiness and little bits of chocolate here and there. But we don't buy cigars just to look at them and smell them. We enjoy a good smoke. So let's get to it, shall we? And fire up one of my favorites of the year. That's what it is. It's gingerbread. That's the aroma I've been trying to put my finger on. Fresh, Christmassy like gingerbread, doughy and sweet, a little ginger spice and sugary. And with that black tea, lemony kind of aromatic coming off that Sumatran wrapper, all in all, wonderful aromatic. Oh, you're on the tight. Oh, you're a tight one. I'm going to go for a punch on this actually because I don't want to 
get too fiery of a draw. And plus, it's box pressed. And I like to punch my box pressed cigars. I highly recommend you try this uh, methodology if you have yet to uh, attempt it. It typically works pretty well for smoke control, but also just because, you know, keeps you from getting too much tobacco in your pothole. Being that I punched the cigar, cold pulls are a little bit more mellow than if I cut it. On the other cigars I did cut, I got a lot of the similar, you know, raisin and, you know, a little bit of earthiness and uh, Sumatran spice, as well as that kind of gingery sweet flavor that's like candy ginger, but in a muted form. It's primarily just oliva tobacco earthiness that you get on the cold pulse side, along with a fat splash of cedar because that's how we like to age things, right? Initial impressions, a bit of a dough bomb, kind of like uh, unbaked bread doughiness, and a little bit of sourdough too. And this is very interesting because you would expect it to be a bit of a spicy start, but it's very medium, which the cigar itself is rated as a medium, medium full side of Sumatran spice, uh, as well as body. This is a bit different than the other cigars that I smoked, which were a little bit more Sumatran spice forward at the beginning, but still very much a bready concoction. While we allow these flavor profiles to develop a little bit off the light, let me give you a little more backstory on this Allegiance collab blend. When E.P. Carrillo and Oliva Cigars launched this smoke uh, in early 2023, they produced about 150,000 cigars, 150000. And that is because now, they didn't know how it was going to go over. And so they said, hey, no, let's release this many of these cigars. And if it sells well, we'll see about rolling more. Obviously, this is one of those. And it has been doing very well for them. It currently has a 94 rating at Cigar Aficionado, an equal 94 rating at Cigar Insider. Most people love it. Half Wheel, I think, gave it an 88. They weren't too keen on it, but I think that was because they smoked a different Vitola um, and just weren't super happy with the development of the cigar flavor profile, especially in the final third, if memory serves. However, here at Claro, we tend to do things a little bit differently just because, well, everyone has their own smoking style and preference for rating cigars. And, you know, everyone's palate's are different. I'm glad that I punched this cigar because, as you can clearly see, smoke production and draw are not an issue whatsoever with this smoke. So keep that in mind for yourself as well. It's also... At this point, in the first third, starting to develop a little bit of a nuttiness. A mixture of cashew and almonds is what I'm detecting. No peanuts, no roasted walnuts or any of that. And the spice from the Sumatran wrapper starts to come into its own and tickle the palate a little bit without being spicy. This is a very smooth, heavily fermented cigar. The Sumatran wrapper is almost borderline Maduro category, in my opinion. It's a very oily, dark, ruddish red color and just mm, shines. Right in the center of the first third is when the cigar flavor profile truly comes alive in the smoke. And they market the cigar with notes of dark chocolate covered raisins cinnamon and all these baking spices and you know what you're right it does have all these flavors in it retro hills provide something very intriguing check it out there's a tingle upstairs when you use the old schnozaruski and hit a hefty retro hail with this cigar it's still got a lot of those baking spices and a little bit of that you know raisin like dried fruit chocolatiness but there's a lot of cedar in the aromatic side that you pick up with your nose when you retrohale this cigar. You don't get that so much on the palate. So for those of you who are cedar fans, uh, like myself, retrohale a good bit of this cigar and you will find yourself thoroughly impressed with what you receive in return. It's right here in the center of the cigar that that Sumatran wrapper 
suddenly says, hey, I'm still here. Don't forget about me. And fires itself up into super duper mode. And whoo wee, what a super duper Sumatran rapper this is. Remember, it's Ecuadorian. So, you know, their continuous cloud coverage that Ecuador is known for does mellow out some of the strength and spiciness of the tobacco leaf itself. It's still very medium, medium in spice, but wow, the spice flavor profiles that it provides is your typical Sumatran unique sun-grown flavor. For those of you who are not super familiar with Sumatran tobacco, the closest thing I can compare it to is kind of like a spice chai tea taste. And depending upon what your filler and binder ingredients are, can become milkier or a little bit darker and heavier uh, or black tea-like, which this cigar favors that black tea side, uh, which I picked up on the aromatic end as well, pre-light. Very nice for those of you who like Sumatran tobacco, though, or something with a little bit of spice flavor without being super spicy. Mm -hmm. While retro hails continue to bring forth some of that Sumatran spice and cedar notes, the final third has the dark chocolate covered raisin notes as its prominent flavor attribute. And it gets a little bit on the drier side and a little more on the maltier end. It's doughy, it's clean, and it's a little bit more on the upper end of medium. Not all the way to full, but getting there in body. Strength is still very much a medium affair, and smoke production continues to rule. Mm -hmm. The closure to the final third and movement into the parting puffs section of the cigar is a, a little bit more of a flip-flop uh, back to the Sumatran taste from earlier and more cedar. There's still some chocolatey notes along with some espresso bean undertones. The other cigars that I've smoked, I've smoked two prior to this, went more toward deeper into that dark chocolate raisin note and earthiness. Uh, from earlier. So we'll see if that comes through further down into parting puffs. And this may just be a little bit of a uh, um, late bloomer. Parting puffs are a bit on the spicy side. Sumatran spice along with a little bit of pepper heat, which hasn't been present the entire time until now, along with a good bit of cedar. This is probably the most cedar forward portion of the cigar. And aromatically speaking, that is a very pleasant way to close things out. You're left with a very refreshing taste and finish instead of it being super charry. There is still some chocolate floating around in there, uh, but it's primarily Sumatran spice and cedar at this moment. As for this particular stick that we are smoking today for this video, I had some construction issues. Uh, I had to do a couple of sizable touch-ups to the stick and to get it to burn right. It also wanted to go out on me once. So I have to look at that and compare it to the other cigars that I smoked, uh, which are the same Vitola and of course same blend, which burned immaculately. No issues whatsoever with those. So it was definitely just this one stick. That does still dock at a few points, as well as the flavor profiles on this cigar are, were different than the other ones that I smoked. Uh, and that the transitions occurred at a little bit different stages. Um, it, so there was some consistency issues in that regard. Still, an absolutely outstanding cigar for those who are fans of Sumatran cigars and Sumatran wrappers in particular, as well as for those who are fans of box press smokes. It's a very attractive cigar. It's a very clean tasting cigar. And save for this one stick and its burn issues, a very well constructed cigar. So that earns this cigar a 4.6 out of 5 stars for me. If I had not had any issues with this particular stick, it would have got, probably gotten a 4.7, maybe even a 4.8. 4 so for now, this is Micah and the EP Carrillo Allegiance signing off. Cheers.